All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian Farmhart's Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Thursday, October 6th. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and get into the details of today. Um, as I'm speaking, we just had earnings from AEHR and AMD um, just guided down. So this is really interesting. Before I get to today's recap, and I might as well mention the risk disclaimer before I get too deep into the recap, but Everything that we're going through here is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Uh, the video is for education purposes only. So AMD just guided down. Now, here's the big question, folks, is whether or not the stock's going to go down, right? Look at the pre preliminary third quarter revenue, about 5.6 to 6, uh, 5.6, they estimated 6.7. You could see some of the headlines that are coming out. They're talking about weaker than expected PC market, inventory corrections, and look at what the stock is doing. Um, it's down just fractionally at this point. Um, so why do I think that this is so important? Because is the bad news priced into the stock already? Right? This is what makes trading and investing and the market so interesting is the stock has been down you know, from a high of 164 down to 67. There's a lot of bad news already in this stock. So we just got a whole big, big, and you know, a whole big announcement that they're going to miss and they're bringing down their guidance. But notice what is happening. The stock isn't moving down that much. It did hit a low of 62 and is trying to stabilize. So again, this will be worked out like in the next day or so. I'm not saying that we're going to know the answer to this in the next five minutes. But uh, what I'm referring to is there's been companies that I've reported, such as a Nike, such as a FedEx, where the stock has gotten obliterated on, on, uh, on earnings, right? And then you have a couple more, you know, you have a couple other ones, specifically this H-E-L-E -E yesterday that also brought down their guidance, um, had some negative numbers to it. And it actually, um, after the init initial reaction of moving lower, actually rallied. And then there's Micron from what? Micron was also the same week as Nike, which is last week. Here was the Micron reaction, right? Bad, horrible quarter, bad guidance, everything, horrible. What happened? Initial reaction lower, stock went up. Why? Because look at this, the path of the stock price, right? There was already a lot built in to the stock price in terms of negative news. So I'm not saying I would want to go out and buy AMD, and I have no position in AMD, but I'm interested to see what's going to happen here. And if the bad news is priced in or um, if the bad, if, you know, this is much more negative than what is already in the stock price and the, and the stock price will adjust uh, based on that. So very interesting because again, we are just going to be starting earning season and um, we're going to get a lot more of this type of thing, in my opinion. Um, you know, how can you not? There's so many names that uh, have uh, international exposure and the dollar has gone up. You know, that is a big headwind for, for companies. So you're going to have, I, I think that's probably going to be the theme of this earnings cycle is how many companies are going to mention the stronger dollars hurting their business. All right. So that said, what kind of environment did we have today? Well, not so good. Um, the breadth you could see from the from the bottom left of my screen. This is the breadth indicator that remember we talked about this a couple of days ago. Really, really strong breadth. Since then, we we really haven't seen um, any follow through from that. So um, we'll have to kind of see how this goes. And if you look at some other things that are going on in the market, the uh, the two other must watches right now. And if you you know, if you watch my videos on a daily basis, you know, these are the two big headwinds that we're constantly focused on. What are interest rates doing, right? And it's not just what the Fed is, you know, is doing on the short end, right, on in the overnight rate, but what's the whole curve doing? So, you know, here we had a little bit of a nice bounce after, you know, some heavy selling pressure, um, you know, back about two weeks ago, we rallied off of that. Um, but we've started to turn back lower again. So the level that I'm watching here in the 30, 30 year bond uh, is 125.30. So that's the value area based on last week's price and volume. So if we if we don't hold this 125.30, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that's not going to be good for stocks. Um, higher yields are generally not good for stocks. Now, 
The other thing, you know, the other must watch has been the U.S. dollar. Now that's moving in the other direction. Um, you know, that was up again today, up 1%. It was up yesterday too. So, you know, after one, two, three, four, five, uh, you know, negative days in the U.S. dollar, it's been climbing back now. And again, a 1% move, it's a, that's a big move for the U.S. dollar. So you also have some levels to watch here. That's 30.23. We'll see if that can break out of the value area or get rejected. Also notice it's sitting right at the bottom of value. That's 3015. So this is definitely a pivot area. Uh, and we'll kind of just have to see if the momentum continues here in the US dollar. Now you could look at some individual, um, you know, individual currencies, and you could see, you know, the euro does have some support on the one hour. But if it doesn't hold here and notice the pattern, lower high. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, right? That is called a pattern and a trend. And notice the line that it keeps butting up against is the 50-day moving average. So the question is, um, is this going to continue? You know, it made the lower high again here. Is it going to continue to, to break? And the level there is 0.98 in the euro. So again, something else to watch. All right. So again, this is all macro stuff. Uh, if you're a single stock, you know, uh, trader, um, you, you know, you may care less about this stuff, but this is what's really affecting the overall market. And, um, and then also in addition to this, right, what is the VIX up to, right? The VIX, um, while is not back to where it was a week ago, it, that's I'm not overly concerned about that because I don't really like chart patterns in uh, in the VIX. It's just the level of the VIX. We're back above 30 again. Now we do have this important jobs report tomorrow uh, that may shed some light on how the economy is doing. Right here's what they're they're expecting for tomorrow. All right. Uh, Non-farm payroll is not a big number, 250. So we'll see, and this is 275. Probably again, what's gonna happen is bad news is probably gonna be good news. Meaning if the number comes in light, you might actually see the market rally based on that. You might see bonds rally too, right? If the number comes in hot, like 500, or even 350 or 400, you're probably gonna see more of what we saw today. We probably will see yields continue to climb. The dollar probably go up and equities possibly down. We'll see, that's just the real, that's one relationship that doesn't sum up all the pieces of the of the puzzle because there are different pieces of the puzzle, right? It, that's, it doesn't mean that somebody else isn't gonna come in here with a big order and kind of buck the trend, but that's this is the general principles that are involved, all right? And, and the market breadth too, you know, we wanna see follow through from what we saw earlier in the week. And so far, we're not seeing that yet. So you put all these things together, what I've painted so far is not a great picture. Um, you know, the S&P had 413 decliners and 88 advancers. So, you know, one day is not a trend, but these, but this was not looking too great today. All right. And um, there's the VIX up 7% for the day. I'll tell you the other thing that's been really consistent, right? Let's, let's talk about oil for a second and energy stocks because they've continued to be the bright spot. Um, I just retweeted this because I thought that this was pretty, a pretty good, um, you know, a, a pretty good look. But, you know, here's, here's what the path, uh, and this is from Market Reader. They're a great follow on Twitter. Um, but take a look at the dark green. That's energy. Um, and that's been outperforming. And then, you know, look at some of the other things, right? Just didn't have momentum at all uh, today. And really some big underperformers too. So um, energy, we did get back above the 50. You know, we got a test here that's going to happen here in crude because that's also, it's trying to get out of the trend at this point of making lower highs because it has been making lower highs since June. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. However, it's trying to reverse here, right? And there's a lot of strength in, in um, energy stocks. XLE, which we I drew this downtrend line, um, 83 will be also interesting to see if energy can get above its uh, value area. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to kind of back and fill a little bit here at that resistance, but a lot of strength. Right, Oxy had a huge day today, and you can go across. I'm not going to go through 15 names, but SLB, which we've been seeing a little bit of call buying in, Slumberger, 
um, pretty strong there and a move out outside of value. Um, interesting because sometimes these slumbers, a Halliburton, um, they kind of some, sometimes are like the last movers of the group, but I don't know if that's going to be the case this time around. The coal names, um, son of a gun, I was going to take this ARL, ARLP and I, I didn't get it today, uh, but it wasn't that big of a move. It was up 1.6%, but I like to move out of the 50-day moving average crossing, excuse me, the 20-day moving average crossing above the 50-day moving average. All right, so that's really where the strength is. I remain long Valero. Um, you know, was up not huge, not as much as something like an Oxy was, but still up decently. Um, CEIX is another name, another uh, coal name. I still think that 7332 V pockets taken out. So there's a couple names. Um, there was this other one too that was mentioned in our room. CHRD um, made a new high today. So again, a lot of strength in the energy group. Outside of that, um, NBIX, you know, so biotech has been particularly strong. Um, and some individual names. So NBIX almost um, took out this candle from the other day. I did get long some of this. Um, we could try to take a target up here at 113 and see how that goes. Um, also a name that had a secondary, which I stayed in from the other day, AMLX, -A that's a tough symbol, uh, strong as well, all right? Then, you know, a few other pockets, and that's basically outside of energy, that's kind of what we have right now. We've got a few pockets of strength. Um, this LPLA is making a nice move. Um, again, I, I was on Benzinga this morning, and I mentioned that I thought something really interesting was said from Bank of America. They talked about how there is a bull market in financial advice. I agree with that. All of these moves that are happening in bonds and so forth, you know, you can still get 4.2% on a two-year bond, right? I would think that's going to cause, you know, people, I, I started to, to tweet about this last week and I had a whole bunch of people ask me, well, how do you buy a bond? I'm like, well, you got to go to your financial, if you're not familiar with it, then I, I would definitely go to your financial advisor, right? You know, Fidel, if you have an account at Fidelity, Schwab, right? These things are free. And you can have a consultant, you know, that you that you can talk with, right? But I agree. I think there's a bull. There's going to be a bull market, uh, or some type of a bull market in financial advice because people are going to have to move around their portfolios um, to get something like this 4.2 percent uh, yield that you can get. Um, I had I've gotten questions on, hey, what about this name? It's got a high dividend, right? A high dividend of five percent or six percent. Why not just buy the bonds? You have no risk, right? Why why do something that's so difficult, right? And try to pick the stock that may stabilize because if the stock goes down, it, you lose money by owning the stock, right? If you buy a two year bond and as long as you want to hold it for two years, you are guaranteed to get four point two percent, right? There, there's no if you know. And you know the only the negative there is that you have to own it for two years, right? To to get the four point two percent, there's no shortcut in that, right? So you are giving up some time value, but you know it's guaranteed. <laughs> you know you couldn't get four point two percent, you couldn't get one percent, uh, you know, a year ago. So what you know why take that added risk of saying, hey, I'm going to bet that this stock is going down so I can get this yield? It's a gimme. Uh, in my opinion. So again, I'm not telling, I'm not giving you financial advice, but uh, I don't know, is it common sense? So yeah, a number of people on Twitter were like, I, I don't know how to own a, buy a bond. Okay, we'll talk to somebody about it. Don't be afraid. You can do it. Um, so yeah, so yes, going back to my example, like, you know, I think that you're going to see some, some, uh, you know, some areas of the market and financials, like banks are tough, because they have a lot of different uh, parts of the business. Like they may be hurting based on their mortgage business or some, something like that. But for a company that is more or less, you know, is not in the mortgage area then, or, or in the auto uh, you know, lending area, you know, you might find a play such as an LPLA or, or, or a Schwab, which is I'm long Schwab. It hasn't really moved the way I want it to yet, but that's another one. Another one that I'm watching is PayPal. Right. I'm actually I got long some PayPal today, even though it's in a downtrend. Why? Because you can go to PayPal now and get 2.25 percent. You know, so I, I think that that's there. There are some little areas like this that are of strength. 
Um, I'll just talk about one more, Eric, because I want to keep this video short. But look at what's going on with the utilities. They are breaking down, right? They are finally responding to what interest rates are doing, right? Just as I said, you don't need to go into a utility to get yield because you could just go into bonds, right? And when you have rates moving as fast as they are, people are getting out of some of these things because you don't need to be in them for yield, right? You could go to easier places in the market, right? We have seen some put buying in XLV, right? This has been another kind of safety place. So I would be careful. I would be mindful with this group right now because it's probably overcrowded, I think, because it's acted so well, right? Other than energy, probably healthcare has been, um, you know, second or third on the list of, of places to kind of hide out in. So um, I would be mindful that, you know, watch your support, watch the 50 day. Um, excuse me, watch the 20 day moving average. And again, healthcare is much different than biotech. All right, guys, I'll leave it there for the day. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.